say that this is one of the more affordable engine swaps you can perform? I, I think it's the best engine swap for the East Europe. <laughs> Good morning everyone and uh, nice to see you all again after such a long time. Today I'm on a mission, a mission to discover a Mazda RX-8 that's not exactly what it looks like. On the outside it may look like an ordinary RX-8 that uh, has a few upgrades, but that's not the case for the engine bay anymore. And even though we're uh, quite fond of our rotary engines this one is part of our brotherhoods club so I'm going to give you a quick rundown of its build so judging by the license plate you can already tell that this doesn't have a rotary engine inside with the 1.8 turbo borrowed from an Audi so this is a turbo car which means no more torque issues and plenty of horsepower while also being quite reliable. So let's pop the hood. Nice. So I see the engine sits uh, quite a big bit towards the back. Is it? Yeah, it's towards the front axle. Is that the oil catch can or what? Yeah, uh, a lot of pressure gets the oil outside. So. Okay, so you. Clean it. You told me about the manifold, the exhaust manifold? It's custom one. Custom one, okay. What, uh, I guess titanium or what? Or no, not necessarily. No, no. simple steel. You should try Inconel. <laughs> you should try Inconel. Okay, what else do you have here? Like this big... Uh... Spot filter. Uh -huh. What are you doing for... HK SSQ1. Mm -hmm. Coils, these are also aftermarket? The stock ones. Stock? Okay. Battery, what are you using for battery? Is it in the front or a real in case? The in the back, okay. I really didn't expect it to sit that far back in the car. Look at all the space here. Plugs, any upgraded plugs or just spark plugs? Colder ones. Mm -hmm. Ready. So we get to see a different engine swaps quite often in these cars. Some drivers uh, usually opt for BMW engines, but this time we we're looking at uh, something from the Vibe Group. It's a 1.8 turbo. So we should be running at about 300 horsepower? 55. 355? Okay. On what kind of boost? 1.8. 1.8, okay. It's sitting just now. Is it the stock turbo or is it a bigger turbo? It's a bigger turbo, it's a turbo systems. 2651B1 without wastegate. It has an external wastegate with screamer pipe. That's nice. Let's see what this baby can do. I'm setting the boost controller. I was running past 1.6. Now I'm getting to, to 1.8. What about uh, engine management? Do you have a separate ECU uh, or? Uh, no, it's the stock uh, ECU. Stock? Okay. Yes, but it's tuned. That's nice. So it's still a 5 gear gearbox, huh? Yes. 5 speed. It holds more torque than 6 speed. So this was a what? A 192 base model? Yes. Okay.
definitely feels torquier than the rotary engine. Did you build the car yourself or was the engine already inside? The engine was inside but it's not the same engine. The engine that was inside uh, was scrapped about 200 kilometers after I bought it because the flywheel was not uh, center weighted and uh, that killed the engine, the vibrations. Would you say that this is one of the more affordable engine swaps you can perform? I, I think it's the best engine swap for the East Europe mm -hmm. because you can find anywhere this engine, it's mm -hmm. cheap. How so much do would you have to pay for a 1.8 turbo engine? Like 500 euros? 5, 5 to 700 euros, mm -hmm. complete engine swap. Uh, and after that you need to buy some rods, it's about 3 to 400 euros. Uh, a tune, uh, you can use the stock uh, ECU uh, and after that uh, just custom work, bigger turbo, injectors, fuel pump, this kind of stuff. What about reliability? How, how long have you had the car? Have you had any major problems with it? Uh, 10,000 kilometers not, didn't found any problem and I used it for drifting, drag racing, daily use. The fuel consumption is better than stock. Name one of your biggest drag racing opponents, like someone you uh, you gapped in this car. Uh, front wheel drive Honda Civic with three, 320... Ah, oh, the newer generation? No, the old one. Oh, okay. Turbocharged or what? Yes, turbocharged. B16 turbocharged. Mm -hmm. And the start is better on this one because it's rear wheel drive. But after that, uh, Honda is slowly getting... Wheel spin or what? No, I mean being easier and front wheel drive, it has uh, less drivetrain loss. Oh, okay. And it's getting good up to speed. After 140, it's better, the Honda. And what about drifting? Like, did you try anything pro or just uh, for fun? For fun, uh, but I'm using on low boost. The whiskey pressure spring 1.2 bar uh, because it spins real fast it's too much power for the second gear i think you already mentioned but what kind of a differential are you running in the back uh, x7 fd the it's fd a torsen one. Mm -hmm. it's better for locking for drifting it's more predictable what about uh grip loss like during corners have you ever experienced the car going sideways at random bit, it's a little bit uh, going uh, over steering mm. more after this differential i understand